Today, we are 154 business days away from a single, most significant change to the UK's tax regime in recent years, making tax digital. My name's Laura Brennan, and I'm here with my colleague, Joe Stein. Good morning, everyone. And together we'll be delivering a webinar today to help you understand what making tax digital really means, how it'll affect your business, and what you need to do now to prepare for the changes to ensure that you are ready for making tax digital. Today we'll be working through HMRC's policy objective, where we are now under the timetable, what constitutes a digital record, and the list of functional compatible software and the process for submission. Then we will summarise the key differences under making tax digital before talking about what action you need to take. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to enter them in the chat box and we'll work our way through them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so HMRC's policy objective is to become one of the most digitally advanced tax administrations in the world, modernising it, making it more effective, efficient and easier to comply at the same time as reducing the tax gap, which is currently estimated at a staggering £9.4 billion. Now, millions of businesses are already banking, paying bills and interacting online and benefiting from the simplicity and convenience of digital services. And the aim of making tax digital is to bring the tax system into line with what businesses and individuals now expect from other online service providers, a modern digital experience. Making tax digital will help businesses and individuals to get their tax right first time, which will reduce the likelihood of errors, giving businesses greater certainty of the accuracy of their records and tax liabilities. And by making tax digital, HMRC expect to take out around 10% of error on an ongoing basis and give businesses a clear review of their tax position in the year. And the goal is to make it more efficient by having a complete financial picture of your tax affairs in your digital account, where you will be able to see and manage all your liabilities. And removing the need to provide the same information to HMRC time and time again. For example, entering your salary onto a personal tax return when HMRC already holds this information. And collecting information in real time, stopping tax due or repayments owed from building up with the ability to set tax overpayments of one tax against the underpayment of another. Well, it all sounds good, doesn't it? But the problem is that businesses and individuals are just not ready. And so back in 2017, after a number of concerns around the pace and scale of change, the government delayed the implementation of regular tax digital for businesses and announced a new timetable, starting with making tax digital for VAT first step on the road to the full digitalisation of the UK's tax system. So where are we now? Well, under the new timetable from the 1st of April 2019, only VAT registered businesses with a taxable turnover above the VAT threshold, which is currently 85,000, will have to keep digital records and only to meet VAT obligations. Now, most businesses file quarterly VAT returns. So there's actually no change to the timing of information that's going to be provided to HMRC, but the way in which it's submitted. In 2010, we moved from having paper VAT returns to online VAT returns. And now HMRC are building on this by integrating digital records. And this will provide a seamless process and a complete digital audit trail to support each VAT return. And we now know that from the 1st of April 2019, you'll no longer be able to log into HMRC's portal and type your VAT figures. Now this is currently what 71% of us do. Instead, we'll have to ensure that we have functional compatible software that has the ability to receive and submit information from HMRC using an API platform, which is an application programming interface to submit VAT returns. This spring, HMRC introduced a private beta. In the coming months, HMRC will open the pilot to allow more businesses and agents to join the pilot and test submissions. Digital record keeping and quarterly reporting to HMRC will not be required for other taxes until at least 2020. 
However, making tax digital will be available on a voluntary basis for smaller businesses and other taxes to allow businesses more choice over when to go digital. So digital record keeping. Currently, all that registered businesses must keep and preserve certain records and accounts as a legal requirement. From the 1st of April 2019, some of these records must be kept digitally and within functional compatible software. Records that are not specified in the HMRC Making Tax Digital Notice or that are not required to complete your VAT return, they do not need to be kept in the functional compatible software. Now, some software um, will record your VAT records and accounts information for you already, including storing digital copies of invoices. However, there are some records that by law must still be kept and preserved in their original form, and that's either for VAT purposes or for other tax purposes. So, for example, you must still keep a C79, an import VAT certificate, in its original form. So, Joe, what records have to be kept digitally under making tax digital for VAT? So, first of all, there is a set of data required referred to as designatory data. And this includes your business name, your principal place of business, your VAT number, and any accounting schemes that your accountant use. In addition to this, HMRC expect businesses to record certain transactional data in relation to supplies made and received. For each supply made, you will be required to record the time of the supply, and this could be different to the invoice date, and it determines the VAT period in which the transaction should be recorded. You will also be required to record the net amounts and the VAT rate charged, and you must have a total of the outputs split per VAT rate. So Joe, what about schemes like the VAT retail scheme? If you use a retail scheme, you must keep a digital record of your daily gross takings. However, you are not required to keep a se separate record of the supplies that make up your daily gross takings in the functional compatible software. Now, for each supply received, again, you will be required to record the time of supply, the net amount, and the amount of input VAT you will claim. And there is no requirement under the new regulations for supplies received to be split by VAT rate. If the amount of input VAT recoverable is unknown at the time of the transaction, when it is entered, it can be later adjusted, for example, under partial exemption. The above transactional data requirements only include supplies which are required for your VAT returns. So if you have intra-VAT group transactions, these would not be required to be recorded in this way. So what happens when an invoice has line items that are subject to different VAT rates? So in summary, if different transactions are subject to the same rate, they may be recorded as a single line entry with no requirement to enter each individual item. However, if transactions relate to different VAT rates, you will need to review how your software currently deals with this and ensure that it can be um, updated to meet the new requirements. In addition to the um, designatory data and transactional data I just mentioned, HMRC also requires summary data to be recorded again in the functional compatible software. And this summary data supports each VAT return, and it includes your total output tax due on supplies made, total acquisition VAT due on goods received from other member states, your total tax due on reverse charge transactions, for example, services received from outside the UK, your total input tax the business is entitled to recover, and your total input tax the business can recover in relation to your acquisitions. You must also have your total VAT due or reclaimable as a result of any correction or error adjustments and any other adjustments um, which can be entered as a single line item. Now adjustments may be calculated and recorded outside of the functional compatible software with no digital link and the total of each adjustment entered as a journal and HMRC recognise that businesses may close a period before the VAT return can be completed. 
And this allows for the back return to be reviewed and adjustments to be treated this way. So to summarise, HMRC require from the 1st of April 2019, your designatory data, transactional data, and summary data to be held within functional compatible software. Thanks, Jay. So what is functional compatible software? So functional compatible software, this can be a software program or a set of software programs, products or applications that must be capable of the following. Record and preserve your digital records. Submit information held in those digital records to HMRC using the API platform. Receive information from HMRC again via the API platform. Now where your business has multiple accounting systems or uses different software, i.e. a group of companies in a BAT group on different systems, or where you transfer multiple reports to Excel to compile the BAT return, each piece of software must be digitally linked to the other software packages that make up the set of digital records for your business. HMRC have confirmed um, the following as acceptable digital links. XML and CSV imports and exports, API transfers, automated data transfers, and have also confirmed that you can email spreadsheets or provide your tax agents with data um, downloaded onto USB sticks. HMRC have published a list of compatible software providers and confirmed that API enabled spreadsheets um, fall within functional compatible software. So here is a list of the current approved suppliers. Um, we know that HMRC are working with more than 150 software suppliers who have said that they'll provide software for making tax digital for that in time for April 2019. Now the list is on their website and it's currently being updated daily. So let's take a look at a typical current process and then we can compare this to a making tax digital compliant process. So let's take an example of a business um, that has a VAT report um, or a number of reports that make up the back return data which is ran from their accounting software. Those various reports are copy and pasted into a VAT working book, for example in Excel, breaking the digital link. The data um, is then manually altered and recaptured to carry out the various VAT checks and the reports that are being copied and pasted with different working files or tabs, again, removing um, digital links. The final back return figures are then manually entered into the HMRC portal and submitted. By breaking these digital links, um, it's creating the risk of errors. So how should a making tax digital compliant process look? Well, under the first example, it looks at a business which uses, for example, one accounting software package and makes all the adjustments within the software package before the back return report is finalised and ready for submission. The accounting software produces a back return which can be submitted to HMRC either as approved software which submits direct or via a bridging tool which links via HMRC's application programming interface. The second example considers businesses which extracts data from the accounting software into an API enabled Excel spreadsheet to compile the back return and make the necessary adjustments to finalise the return figures. From the 1st of April 2020, the data download must be digital. However, from the 1st of April 2019, HMRC will take a soft landing approach, whereby businesses will not be required to have the digital links between software programs, but it must have a digital link where the data is transferred following the preparation of back return, solely for the purpose of submitting the back return to HMRC um, via the API. HMRC accept that manual adjustments may be required, such as partial exemption calculations, and they've stated that each adjustment total can be entered as a single line entry into um, your functional compatible software. 
Workings within API-enabled spreadsheets must be digitally linked using, for example, formulas as opposed to copy and paste. Copy and paste is not permitted under making text digital. The final return figures must then be submitted digitally via the API-enabled spreadsheet to HMRC. Okay, so just to summarise the key differences then. There are three digital components to making tax digital for VAT. You have digital records. Now, although this does not mean that businesses will have to store each invoice and receipt digitally in accounting software, the transactional data must be stored digitally. Okay. And this includes your accounts payable and accounts receivable transactions and a digital VAT account from which the VAT return is prepared. You must also have digital links. VAT returns must have digital links to digital records. Spreadsheets can remain, but they will need digital links to source systems. HMRC has announced the soft landing period, as Joe's just said, of 12 months. However, digital links will be mandatory from 1st of April 2020. And finally, digital, digital submission. At present, most businesses submit their VAT returns through manually rekeying into HMRC's online portal. And in line with the move towards digital, that online portal will close from April 2019 and taxpayers will no longer be able to submit VAT returns this way. Instead, all submissions must be done digitally by HMRC's Making Tax Digital API. So what can we do now? Well, Making Tax Digital VAT is still scheduled to go live on the 1st of April 2019, which is only 154 business days away. So we really do need to act and prepare now. We suggest that you review your systems and VAT return processes to ascertain if they are Making Tax Digital compliant. You need to talk to your software provider and ask what their plans are for Making Tax Digital. If they're not developing a solution to talk to us, and talk to us to consider your options for becoming Making Tax Digital compliant, such as using bridging software or API-enabled spreadsheets. And now is the time to automate processes, revolutionise those spreadsheets and remove any manual intervention. Now is also the perfect opportunity to start digitising routine business tasks such as data entry. Although it's not mandatory, as we previously said, to use software that scans invoices, retains the image, and records the information in the ledger, it's advantageous to do so, as it saves physically storing records and it automates the process, therefore saving time and money. If you still have a desktop accounting package, you need to consider moving to the cloud and migrating your data to an API-enabled software package, and this will form the base of your digital journey. Some accounting packages have built-in VAT checks, and we'd recommend using this functionality to ensure your records are accurate and that the correct tax rates have been used and that any errors have been identified on a more timely basis ready for when quarterly reporting does come in. There are benefits to becoming digital. So first off, businesses become more efficient and more effective when manual processes are replaced with anything that's automated. Eliminating manual entry reduces the risk of error. It will assist you to keep HMRC and making tax digital compliant. And you can also reduce your costs by digitally filing your supply of invoices, as an example, which removes undue storage expenses. And will also give you instant access to those documents. Becoming automated and implementing proper controls can lead to better management information and quicker internal decision making. Becoming Digital is the future, it's the direction of travel, and it's happening now. So we are only 154 business days away from the single most significant change to the UK's tax regime in recent times, making tax digital. If you have any further questions, then please do visit the elevatebymazar.co.uk website or contact Joe or I. Thank you for joining us on the webinar today. We're now going to move on to a QA. and a We've received quite a few questions. So, Joe, do you want to pick some of these up? Okay. So, the first question is, do you think Microsoft will offer an API-enabled spreadsheet? As far as I'm aware, I haven't heard of Microsoft um, 
issuing an API labeled spreadsheets. Um, if you look at the software providers and HMRC websites, um, there are a number of approved um, software providers which have successfully connected HMRC's web like via the API and we'll be moving into the testing phase shortly. Um, so it's, I would recommend looking at, at those options at the moment. Keep, keep an eye out and, uh, and maybe contact Microsoft to, to, see what, to see what their plans are and if they have an MTD strategy. Okay, the, ne the next question we've got here is, um, is there a publicly available security and general audit around the API platform and the approved packages, both in general, but also with particular emphasis to personal identifying information and our responsibilities under the various data protection legislations, aka, why should we trust that this software is going to work and who will get the blame when it goes pear-shaped? <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> Um, when you, as part of Make Text Digital um, and using the APIs, you do have to authorise with HMRC that you are happy for the software to talk to your software and submit the data to HMRC. Um, at the moment, it's only the nine boxes that need to be submitted to HMRC, so there's nothing more there from a kind of like data protection um, issue than what's already submitted to HMRC. Um, again, at the moment, the software is going through the testing phase, and our understanding is that HMRC will have a soft landing period. So if the first return isn't submitted due to issues with software, um, we understand HMRC um, will be relatively understanding about this. What happens if we don't have functional compatible software? Okay. If you don't have functional compatible software, then you won't be able to file your VAT return. Um, but if you want to continue using the software that you've already got, as Joe mentioned during the webinar, what you can do is you can uh, send a backup of your data to your agent or to your accountant and they can use functional compatible software to file, to file the return. So you can take a backup of your data as it is um, and as long as it holds digital records, send that to your agent for them to submit via their API platform. And what happens if you have no digital link from your software to say an AP and enabled spreadsheet? So at the moment, HMRC are taking um, a soft landing from the 1st of April 2019 to the 1st of April 2020, um, where a digital link between your software packages is not mandatory. However, from April 2020, there must be a digital link. So we'd recommend perhaps talking to your software provider and understanding um, the functionality within your systems um, or to ask whether they will um, update their software to become Make and Tax Digital to enable you to have a digital link to an API enabled spreadsheet. There's a few questions about uh, making the slides available. Um, we'll be sending out a recording as well and after the session as well. There's a question there also about how do we make a spreadsheet API enabled? Is this something we have? which person would be able to do. Um, I'm not an IT expert, but my understanding is um, HMRC have issued the IT specifications on their website, um, which gives you the information about how to link um, to the application programming interface. So we have another question here. What are the benefits of storing transactional data on the cloud? rather than electronically on accounting software held on a separate server on our site. So I, I guess the benefits of storing the transactional data on the cloud um, rather than a separate server. Um, so I, I think what you're saying here is rather than on a desktop product, is that if the information is in the cloud, it, it's more easily accessible um, and it will be easier to link to an API, to an API platform um, and therefore it won't be as costly process to become compliant with making tax digital. 
got some more in the chat box as well. Okay, we've got some more questions here on the chat box, so we'll, we'll answer a, a, a few of those. Um, yeah, okay. It's like company would agree. Oh, sorry. Hold on a bit. Okay, so there's one here about groups. Question. I currently run a group consolidation in Excel from two stage companies. I'm not sure how this will work. Um, okay, well, well, I can say first off, but I know that Sage have actually developed um, a, a group filing. Um, and also, um, for, for group companies in general, um, we also find that lots of clients um, have group companies all on different accounting software packages. Um, so this is perhaps where an API-enabled spreadsheet might be the more appropriate solution for those businesses. And this would allow um, the back reporting data to be digitally downloaded from the various accounting software packages to um, consolidate the group back return in an API-enabled spreadsheet for onward submission to HMRC. So somebody has asked, can we send a link to the HMRC webpage that lists the approved API enabled spreadsheets? We'll, yeah, we'll do that as a follow-up to the webinar. Um, one here, Joe, can we go into more detail around the soft landing period? Yes, so the soft landing period is from the 1st of April 2019. Um, so as, as mentioned, this is around your digital links. Um, and our understanding is that HMRC have realised that this is probably the more difficult part of making your records fully digital, um, especially for businesses that have multiple software packages, uh, not necessarily just for back group companies, but where perhaps transactions are reported on the sales side in one package and you have to upload that into your overall accounting software package. Um, so, but the, the mandatory points um, to make clear here, here is that it's the digital link from your final VAT return workings, so if that's in your API spreadsheet for example, is that digital link that must connect to HMRC's website by the API um, interface from 1st of April 2019. You will no longer be able to log in and then send nine box figures manually. Question here is that I have a client who keeps totally manual records. What would you suggest they do to start with before moving to an accounting software? Okay, so if they keep completely manual records, um, and for example, are on the cash accounting scheme, I recommend that they move to cloud software where they can use a, a, a direct bank feed if, if they're open to, to doing so. That direct bank feed will link to their bank and it will pull in all the transactions into, into the cloud software. And um, you should be able to automate the reconciliation process. And, and by doing this, you can then very quickly create uh, an online cash book, so to speak. So that would be the first step that I would recommend. Um, another step to consider would be, I guess there's a lot of businesses out there that still receive copy invoices in the post. Um, so I, I would encourage people to talk to their suppliers, maybe change the way, um, change their terms and ask to receive invoices electronically. And if not, then, then maybe state that in your terms, terms of payment. Um, and if you receive a, a copy of the invoice electronically, you can use OCR scanning software uh, to capture the data and post it directly into the accounting system. Again, this is where you can save time um, in, in, in processing and, and gain efficiencies. So that would probably be another step that I would encourage to start that digital journey. Also, well, HMRC have stated that spreadsheets, provided that API enabled, count as your functional compatible software. So if your business is storing all your transactions in Excel, um, you would have to assure that's um, API enabled, but also that you have all the data, so your designatory data, your transactional data, and your summary data, all held in that one piece of functional capacity software. But also, just to be clear, that you can no, no longer use any copy and pasting, so you'd have to automate the process within those spreadsheets, 
um, using formulas and the functionality um, within the automation of Excel. So, for example, the totals, the sum totals of all of your transactional data, how that feeds into the back summary, yeah. which will then feed into the back, back return onto the API platform. All of that would need to be automated and digitally linked. Okay, so what happens if your quarterly VAT period doesn't match with the 1st of April? Yes, so the new rules come in for VAT quarters beginning on or after the 1st of April 2019. So if it doesn't, if your VAT period um, begins, for example, on the 1st of May 2019, that's when the rules will apply to you. So if you've got, there's some questions here from people that are, are talking about having very, very bespoke systems. Um, it'd be worthwhile just dropping Joe and I a note afterwards because we can discuss your exact requirements. If you've got concerns about meeting the first of April deadline, um, it'd be worthwhile taking the conversation offline and we can talk to you in a little bit more detail about what your options are for becoming compliant. Mm -hmm. okay, we've got some more questions in the chat box. We'll further do that one moment. Okay, so we'll, we'll answer a few more a few more questions. And then what I think we'll do is as a follow up, and um, if you've got any further questions, please email them to us. We will send everybody a list of the, the questions that have been asked and, and our answers. And we'll also set up meetings local local to individuals so that we can we can follow up on a one-to-one -one basis to ensure we've discussed your requirements fully. Okay, so so another question is are there any examples available to help partial example? partial exemption calculations can be done. Um, so HMRC do acknowledge that um, partial exemption calculations um, probably won't be able to be automated. Um, and they acknowledge that also this probably can't be done within functional compatible software. So what they are saying is those calculations can be done outside of a functional compatible software and an adjustment put through as a, as a journal um, or entered as a line item if you're using um, Excel to calculate your back returns, as long as they're API enabled, um, your total partial exemption figure can be entered into your back return figures that way. There is, there is some detail in the notice around partial exemptions um, and the notice is 700-22 um, and, it, and it's got some good uh, illustrations in there of how partial exemption can work, so that would be worth reviewing. If you'd like any further details around that, please do get in touch after the presentation. We'd be more than happy to, to talk these through with you. So right, we'll, take, we'll take one more question here, so um, around adjustments. So would adjustments such as bad debt relief need to be linked to the journal posted to the ledger, or can I make this adjustment in a separate tab and keep the backup in a separate file? Yes, yeah, so again, I think that's where HMRC are recognising again that certain adjustments can't be done within the functional compatible software. So the, the calculations can be done in a separate spreadsheet and my understanding is that that spreadsheet doesn't have to be um, API enabled. Um, but the total adjustment, so each individual adjustment, so whether it's partial exemption or bad debt relief, those individual totals are entered as a line item into your back return workings or into your functional compatible software, which is API labeled and would submit to HMS. Okay. So uh, thank, thank you everyone for, for joining the webinar. As previously said, we will we will follow up um, sending out the questions and answers and, and if you've got any further questions please do get in contact with Joe or I and we'll be happy to set up meetings local, local to you. Thanks again. Thanks everyone.